Welcome to the third and final video in the Uniform Reviews series. Links to the first two are in the description. So far, we've seen the awful, that's the Cardinals, Rams, and Falcons, the bad, that's the Bengals, Titans, and Patriots, close, Panthers, Ravens, Texans, Jets, Broncos, and Dolphins, and the largest category, the good, Colts, Eagles, Buccaneers, Cowboys, Saints, Jaguars, Lions, Packers, Red the teams that we are left with are the cream of the crop in NFL uniforms. Teams with iconic looks or teams that have formed new iconic looks based on old ones. Let's move on to the great category, the Cleveland Browns. I want to send a message, a message to everyone who ever made fun of Cleveland, a message to anyone who ever told a Cleveland joke or laughed at a Cleveland joke. You can now officially shut up! Sometimes when you screw up a uniform so bad, you can't release a new design. Even if the Browns came out with the coolest, most modern design that incorporates their old look, it wouldn't have worked. People were so sick at looking at these ultimate try-hard uniforms almost immediately. The front office even wanted to change their uniforms, but couldn't. You see, the NFL has this five-year rule on uniforms. Once you change your set, you can't change it again for at least five years. So the Browns ended up resorting to wearing their alternate color rush jersey at home instead. Then, as soon as that five years was up, they changed back to their old look. I'm happy they went back to them. A lot of people might not like the browns because, you know, the color scheme. And I get it, who wants to be brown and orange? But that's kind of the great thing about them. You can't confuse these guys for anybody else. And what are they gonna do? Not have brown in their colors? It's really the best use of these colors. Too much orange, and you're a traffic cone. Too much brown, you're poops. So I think they did the right thing by just going back to a classic look that they know their fans love. But it is weird that they went with this traumatic flashback scene in a movie for the uniform reveal. He was down at the old abandoned fluorescent light factory. Some say his spirit is still in there, flexing. Even with all this epilepsy triggering, you could see the contrast in this minimalistic design. It'll look great on all body types. It's what the Browns should have always been. Would I have liked something that incorporated Brownie the Elf? Or maybe a larger helmet stripe? Sure, but this is the only uniform they can go with right now. Can't wait to see these things on the field. The Browns did a similar thing to the Buccaneers, going back to a previous design with their new redesign. There is one odd thing with the brown pants. It only features orange stripes. It doesn't have the white down the middle, which is a little odd. I think it would look better with the white on the pants. The other odd thing is their alternate uniform features no striping. It's just all brown with orange numbers and um, Nike swooshes. So you have a bit of that yoga pants look that we've mentioned before. I also like the Browns having an orange uniform, so I hope they come back to it, but I think it's nice to mix it up. Up next, the Chicago Bears. Full disclosure, I am a Bears fan. Always have been, even when I looked like a little lunch lady in an Eric Kramer jersey. But I could put my bias aside for something like this. I mean, I was able to do it for the Packers, the worst franchise ever, with that big dopey-eyed Aaron Rodgers over there, just destroying the Bears' hopes and dreams every year. Aaron Rodgers and his big dumb face, sitting around in the pocket flinging Hail Mary passes, always looking like a smug dumb face idiot. Bad man! Big dumb face bad man! You know what? I'm gonna put Aaron Rodgers' big dumb face in the awful category. Where was I? Oh yeah, I'm totally impartial. The Bears have constantly been tweaking their uniform design to fit NFL equipment changes. And they're so good that people don't even notice when they change. See, back when Nike took over, the Bears made a critical change to their set. When the Bears first made this design, almost all NFL players had long sleeves. So these three stripes and the TV numbers could share the same real estate. But slowly, as time passed, the sleeves became shorter and shorter. 
Soon the three stripes were lost below the pad level and the TV numbers just kind of owned that area. And that's not a good look when your Hall of Fame player, coach, owner has his initials on one of those sleeve stripes. So when Nike came back with a new template, the Bears decided to move their TV numbers up to their shoulder pads and then that gives them their whole sleeve cap for the stripes. It looks much better. Those shoulder stripes that match the stripes in the sock is such an amazing minimalist design. The Bears have always been about stripes too. In 2019, they showed off their amazing psychedelic 1936 uniforms that have these insane striped socks, excessive striped shoulders, and this amazing three-stripe helmet. The helmet looks like the Michigan Wolverines, but the Bears actually came out with this look first. The Bears were also one of the first teams to not use block numbers. They knew right away that this rounded logo wouldn't work with block numbers, something the Panthers still haven't gotten right. So they made this font to perfectly complement their Wishbone C logo. It's also fitting that the Bears have their founder, George Hallis's initials on their uniform because he basically picked them out himself. The Bears are navy and orange because Hallis went to Illinois University and they're called the Bears because they used to play in Wrigley and Hallis said, if those guys are Cubs, then wear Bears. Even the Wishbone C is a very Chicago thing. Yes, it's been used by other teams in other cities, but the first team on record to use this wishbone C was the University of Chicago in 1898. It's a lot of uniform history packed into this set. They also have the freedom to do what they did last year. They changed their logo to all white and then changed their face mask to gray for an easy throwback look. I would love to see them do this for some away games, an all white look with a gray face mask. Some things keeping them from the grand and wonderful. The wishbone C is a little too small, needs to be bumped up to fit modern helmets better. Also, it's not symmetrical. It's never been. It used to be worse. It's slightly better, but it's starting to bug me now when it didn't before. The Bears have had such a classic design for so long, people don't even think about them anymore. But as soon as you take a close look, you notice that they're pretty good. To Bacon's point about the bears and the gray face mask, I think that's a big thing that they need to do. If they went with a gray face mask, I think their whole uniform would go up a few spots in my book. I'd also like to see them bring an orange uniform back into rotation, maybe go with a darker orange or something more unique, but Chicago has a pretty decent jersey. Up next, the Kansas City Chiefs. Hey, that's great, but who are the chefs? Not going anywhere for a while? Great googly moogly. Grab a Snickers. The Chiefs have a really nice old AFL look. The thin stripes on their sleeves can also be found on their pants. You can see it's much thinner than a modern stripe. Here's a standard pant stripe. Here are the Chiefs. That old off-white AFL patch goes beautifully with these old school stripes, and the mostly red and white color scheme is so vibrant with just the right amount of yellow. They could easily look like the McDonald's team, but they pulled it off nicely. Their home uniforms are bright and structured, and on the road, they got two great looks. They can go all white, or they can go with their more common white over red. Solid look, won't be changing anytime soon. The Chiefs have a really classic, really good look. It's really simple, but it works with how bright that red is and it stands out. I don't think there's anything that they should change. In my redesign, I gave them a bit of a pattern in their striping, but I think the only thing they need to do is maybe add a creative alternate. I think a red jersey with like yellow numbers would be a simple alternate. The yellow uniform idea looks like Ronald McDonald and I haven't heard the end of it, so they should probably avoid an all yellow look. Overall, it's a really solid uniform. Up next, the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks are one of the very few teams to release a new radical design and haven't been forced to change them back. Now even more with teams like the Browns and Buccaneers being forced back into their older designs, it's great to have a team like Seattle that can pull off this more modern look. It does have the most flaws out of any other uniform in this category, but because the organization and fans have rallied around it, it doesn't really matter. I'm not a huge fan of the matte helmets with the shiny center thing, and I hate the Seahawks word mark on the stripe but those things are outweighed by the overall design of the uniform. I know a lot of people don't like this neon green, but I think with this dull navy and this gray backdrop, it really allows for a super bright color like neon green. It's an extremely difficult color to work with, and I think Nike actually did a great job of showing restraint for once. And that's kind of why the all green are disgusting, but even then, they're almost so bad, they're amazing. 
I really like the use of this feather pattern on the numbers, and I'm fine with it on the pant leg with a nod to the 12th man, but it's a little much on the helmet, and then again on the neckline. It's a little overdesigned. Besides that, it's a great contemporary look. It's a huge upgrade over their previous design, and I give the Seahawks points for taking risks. I'd also be cool with the Seahawks being that team that constantly changes uniforms every five years to try and push the boundary of things. They're one of the few teams that could get away with this. Even though their classic uniforms are super fun and great, I think they're better off just moving forward. Seattle has the most like modern feeling uniform, I think. Um, it's the most unique, and I really appreciate that. I'm a big fan of their classic blue, and in my redesign I did something like that, but I think their look currently is a really good one. I see people that either really love the uniform or think it's okay. I don't know a lot of people that absolutely hate it or anything like that, so that's always a good sign. Moving on to the Minnesota Vikings. Winning the lottery? It hasn't changed me. Get off my lawn. The Vikings used to be in the same boat as the Cardinals, uniform-wise. Thankfully, they were able to look past some seriously bad designs from Reebok, and when 2013 rolled around, they came out with this. An extremely underappreciated aspect of the uniforms are these stripes that mimic the shape of a Viking ship. A great new take on classic striping. Perfect stripe consistency throughout the design also really helps. And even if they're historically inaccurate, the best part of this whole setup is the Viking horns on the helmet. And the matte finish really works with this shade of purple too. Finally, in 2019, the Vikings fixed their helmet. Here's the old one on the left, and here's the new one on the right. You can see it matches the jersey much better. Their number font also perfectly complements the uniform styling and that Viking horn. With some combinations, it doesn't work that well, and it's a little much sometimes, so it's not the best part of the uniform, and that could be tweaked a little bit. But I hope to see this design stick around for a really long time. This one sits right on the edge of grand and wonderful for me. The Vikings are another team that drastically improved their jerseys, and I think a glossy helmet would look good, but the matte helmet is very unique and still looks really good, especially indoors. The only major thing that they should change is the font. I hate the inconsistency with it. I really like their uh, Color Rush uniform too, incorporating more of the gold, yellow, or whatever they call it. Really solid uniform, I'm a big fan of the Vikings. Up next, the New York Giants. And if these texts weren't enough, to prove that, I would like to present my client's internet search history from that evening. I'd rather just confess to the murder. I went back and forth between the good and great for the Giants. What bumped them up for me was that switch back to the white pants. There's nothing really wrong with their gray pants, but the white pants combine the best part of their old design with the best parts of their even older design. It allows them to use this original stripe style that is very New York Giants. And their helmet logo is extremely well done. I love how they use lowercase letters. It really helps it stand out against all these other New York teams. I feel like it's an extremely underrated design. The underlined Giants word mark, it's cool. It just never really did it for me. I'd much rather see this as an alternate logo. The Giants are one of the few teams that have a completely different look on their away uniforms. And when your design is this minimal, it's really awesome to have two completely different looks. I also love their alternate slash throwbacks. I'd love to see them have this look be their home look and then this look be their away look. Two totally different styles. I really enjoy the Giants' use of color and minimalist design elements to achieve their own look. It's at the low end of great, but it's still great. The Giants, I think, have a really great home uniform. I think their away uniform with all red accents on it is a bit odd, but I think their Color Rush white is way better. And I also think they could pull off some striping on the home uniform if they wanted to. I like the simplicity of it now, but in the future, if they were to mix it up, I think some simple striping could work. But their minimalist style now is very unique and just looks really good. That's it for the great category. Let's move on to the grand and wonderful the Las Vegas Raiders. Hey Nate, huh. how do you feel about me putting the Raiders so high on the list? Get the f out of my room. He's really, Get out! He's really upset about it. The Raiders are always at the top of a lot of uniform lists for good reason. The genius of the Raiders uniform is that it's so minimalistic, but people don't even realize how little there is to it. People make fun of the Browns uniforms because they're too boring with a blank helmet. Meanwhile, the Raiders have been getting away with one line for a stripe. It's such a great look that they've been able to keep it through multiple moves. 
Even the fans dress the same. And if you've seen a Raiders home game, you know that 100% of their fans go to Vegas at least twice a year anyway. They dress up like random villains and extras in a Mad Max film. Now you're telling them they have to go to Vegas? You don't think YouTube Darth Vader doesn't already have a timeshare there? The big issue is that every other team's fans are gonna want to go to Raiders home games. So now you got Dale from Ashwabanan, who's usually used to drinking until the bars close, which in Ashwabanan is, let me see, 2 a.m. So now he's in Vegas, so he's going to be drinking until, let me check. Oh yeah, since the plane landed. So there is zero possible way that Ashwabanan Dale and YouTube Darth Vader don't murder each other before the second half. And I can't wait to see it. That is the power of an amazing uniform. Great job, Raiders. The Raiders have another great, iconic design. They keep it simple, but it looks really good, and almost everyone loves this uniform. The away uniform looks even better with the gray numbers, and that is a thing they used to do, so I think they should bring it back and make that their primary away. I also think going to Vegas, they should bring back the classic white uniform with the gold. I did a version of this in my redesign, and people hated it or loved it, and the people that hated it, I don't think realized that it was a look that they actually had in their past. I I don't know, it'd be a th cool thing for them to bring back though. Up next, the Los Angeles Chargers. The Chargers are one of those teams who had an amazing look, but then the 90s happened and bright colors weren't allowed anymore. That mistake stuck with them for way too long, until recently when they woke up and realized that their powder blues were vastly superior. And then they paired that with a yellow face mask, oh my god, it's already a huge upgrade, I love these. Then they're like, oh you like that? How about these bad boys for life? So I have to wait to see them on the field first. Even months later we've only seen these mock-ups and these bad photoshops. But I'm pretty sure that these are the best uniforms that they have ever worn. The removal of those TV numbers leaves a lot of room for their bolts on their shoulders. Then they took the TV numbers and put them on the helmet. So awesome. No other NFL team has helmet numbers on the side like this. Plus, the Chargers helmet logo was originally designed with these numbers in mind. So when they got rid of them, it was a little weird. On the navy helmet, it was fine because that navy filled in the space. But when they switched back to white, it was just too empty for me. This, on the other hand, great. I am a little worried about this lame emoji logo. I guess I should just be happy that they didn't go with a bitmoji look. But I'm pretty sure this is just a marketing thing. If they use it just for now, totally cool. It's harmless fun. So this is how you reboot an old design. Any pant combination on their home or away work wonderfully. And if you're gonna keep the navy, then this is a great look for night games or specific matchups. I kinda don't understand the royal blue set with the navy. It's a lot of different shades of blue for no reason, and it kinda waters down your visual identity. It's also weird because the Rams already use royal and yellow and you share the same city and stadium. It's really only there to sell more jerseys. But it's all so well done, I don't even care. It's got a lot of lightning bolts, but none of them have to compete. Unlike other teams that have the same logo on their sleeves and pants and helmet, this works for the Chargers because they treat their logo like a stripe. My favorite look has to be that powdered blue with yellow pants. Welcome to where you belong, Chargers. Now, my personal favorite uniform out of the whole league now is the new Chargers uniform. Every change I made to the Chargers uniform, they did in their new redesign, but they did it better. It's so funny how contrasting it is to the, what the Rams did. Complete opposites with similar colors. One killed it, one killed it. Up next, the Buffalo Bills. The Bills used to have the worst uniform in the league. That royal blue and navy with absolutely no consistency or structure, giant blocks of color on the side. But sometimes you gotta hit rock bottom before you can climb your way to the top. It's a perfect combination of old and new, with little things like that helmet stripe mimicking the logo by starting off thicker in the back and then tapering off in the front. They look just as good at home as they do on the road or when they're wearing their alternates. 
They're so good, this redundant pant logo actually kind of works here. The only slight thing that bothers me is this dark outline. I love their white helmet and white pants. I mean, these guys could literally have any face mask color and it works. It's a great look. I don't have much to say about the Bills uniforms. I think their design is really good. Previously, they had the worst uniform and then they went back to a classic look like a lot of teams are doing and it looks great. I think a red helmet would be awesome and I think it might even look better, but the white helmet allows them to wear that classic uniform with the classic red logo. And up until the Chargers new uniforms, I think the Bills were probably my favorite um, uniforms in the league. Moving on to the Pittsburgh Steelers. When another team just straight up asks to copy your look, then you're obviously doing something right. I'm a huge fan of the Steelers uniforms, and I love how the city of Pittsburgh just decided, you know what, all our teams, black and yellow. Black and yellow, Penguins. Thank you. I wish more cities would do stuff like this. The patch on the chest is perfect when you're only using one helmet logo. Even that itself is a great design element. It's so original and different. The Steelers are an organization that sticks with tradition, but isn't afraid to make the right changes to their uniforms. Their block numbers, it looks just fine, but this updated number font really matches the rounded logo and brings the whole look together. I really love this contrasting font colors between the name on the back and the numbers. Visually, it creates that separation that you need in a color set like this. I'm even fine with the no sock stripes because this plain pants stripe. The only thing that bugs me is how the shoulder stripes get cut off on a lot of players. It seems to happen with a lot of these big stripes. It used to be a big problem with the 49ers, but they were able to fix it. Maybe the Steelers could have that fixed. But either way, overall, great design, and I love seeing them on game day. The Steelers have one of the best helmet designs in the league, in my opinion, having the logo on one side but not on the other. Unique little things like that really make a team stand out. Obviously, their uniform doesn't really need anything to be done to it. I really wish they could rock the yellow helmets because the all black jerseys that they had with the yellow helmet is one of my favorites. And I actually think it's their best look. And maybe they can redesign their Bumblebee jersey to be a little better. I propose that they did a yellow uniform with subtler kind of soccer hoops. But it's another iconic classic design. Up next, the San Francisco 49ers. It's a little chilly, isn't it, Steve? Oh, sorry. What am I thinking? How's that? Hey, thank you. Good. This is a perfect shade of gold to complement this beautiful cherry red. It's a fantastic color combination that represents the team and the city. I really don't have a lot to say about this look. It's clean, it's structured, all while going with that 50-50 balance. You don't need word marks or a logo to know who these guys are. If you're playing Madden 94, you know who this is. I would like to point out that for some reason, the organization has always tried to screw up this uniform. First way back in the day, they went from gold to silver, even though I'm pretty sure their mascot is about, you know, the gold rush. Then in 1991, they almost came out with this logo that looks more like something you see in a magic eye book. Then they took this amazing look, stripped it of all of its gold, and made it mostly red and black with giant drop shadows. Then they brought back their classic look and decided to outline everything in black and make it cool. Finally, they went back to their best look, but made all black alternates for some reason. It doesn't work. This, right now, I think is their best look. You got these beautiful home and away sets, and their throwbacks are actually pretty awesome for a change of pace, as long as they don't use them full time. For now, their home and away looks are some of the best in the league, and I'm surprised it isn't copied more. The Niners have really good uniforms. I don't know if I would personally put them in the grand and wonderful category. I think they might be one step below because I think they could be better. Whole uniform looks way better with the red face mask. Also, I think one thing that knocks them is that their throwback uniform, I think is their best. And I also wish they incorporated a little more color on the stripes that they have, but there's no debating that this uniform is really good. And I don't know if it's grand and wonderful like Bacon thinks, but it is a really good uniform. So that is it. Every uniform reviewed, and it only took about an hour and 23 minutes, which is the same runtime as Deuce Bigelow European Gigolo. Here's a chart with the amount of teams in each category, and as you can see, there's a lot more good than bad on this list. Even the teams that I have in the worst category aren't that bad and are nowhere near as bad as some previous designs. 
I like how teams have decided to start showing off their new uniforms at events because as a culture we're way more aware of design now. I don't like how this has led to the over-marketing of these things and how the materials released with them are full of corporate speak nonsense. And I love the uniform reveals, but I think you could tell that I kinda hate that they're released with this music video style where you can't see anything. Can you please just show us the uniform in detail? Why do you have to overproduce your stuff? Oh, I'm talking to myself now. Hopefully they'll just get tired of this uncreative nonsense and try something new once people get sick of it. Thanks so much again to Noah for helping me out with this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. My channel is more about comedy and just talking about stuff that I find interesting. So sometimes I'll make an animation, sometimes I'll make a video about a movie or a commercial. I do have a couple more uniform videos planned, but I always try to keep things aggressively silly. Let me know in the comments what you're most interested in seeing next. If all this sounds like fun, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and thanks so much for watching.